Today's Mailbag Monday starts off with Sucrum's Brewing Star Beast Imperial Stout. 10.5% alcohol bar volume. Woohoo! They describe it as a complex and full-bodied Imperial Stout with hints of dark chocolate molasses and a resinous hop bite. That is a very interesting beer. Very roasty. Hmm, I'm going to have to see if they've still got that. Anyway... First thing in from the mailbag is tubing. Let's see if I can cut the package without destroying what's in it. Oh, okay. This is some uh, PTFE, aka Teflon tubing that I ordered for my 3D printer, except I think this is the wrong size. That's a lot skinnier than I expected it to be. But the inside diameter is right for a piece of filament to go through so that does it so this stuff uh, ptfe or teflon tubing is what is used on 3d printers that have a bowden style system basically the this is a acts as a sort of a conduit for the for the filament being pushed through by a stepper motor towards the uh, hot end the melty zone and it does get damaged uh, by excessive heat or things like that sometimes just by kinking so it's not a bad idea to have a little bit extra around but i'm pretty sure this is too skinny on the outside dimension okay so this is three millimeters across 4.1 millimeters yeah so the reason that won't work is because these couplings here grip onto the outside of it so that's not going to work for this application. However, some people do buy uh, or build dry boxes. Uh, uh, basically, just what it says, a box to keep your filament from getting humid. Um, and then run tubing over to the, uh, to the extruder. So this might not be an entire loss. I might be able to use that for this. And I'm hoping it was fairly cheap. It probably was. 2mm, 3mm PTFE F4 tubing pipe for 3D printer, 1.75mm filament riprap rock stock. So when I bought this, I bought it at auction for 99 cents. And I bought it back in October, so I can't show you the item listing because it doesn't exist anymore. But 99 cents with free shipping, even if this was uh, mostly a waste of money, it's not much money to waste really. I'll link you to a listing that finds a whole bunch of them. Pay closer attention than I did to the size that you want. You'll want at least a four millimeter OD, but make sure that you're matching up with the fittings that you've got. You win some, you lose some on these cheap auctions. Let's see what I got in this one. It doesn't say at all, okay? Ah, where's my other knife? A little bit sharper. I'm mean, using that scalpel far too much and it's dulled. It'll still cut tape. Oh, haha. -ha. Remember that LED light bulb kit that I built a few months ago? I enjoyed it so much that I got some more. So I can build more light bulbs with different types of LEDs. Now well, looks like there's three of these. Where's that one that I built before? There it is there. There's what it builds up into. Uh, this particular one I used uh, sort of black light, not actual uv but near uv uh, leds but i figure i can uh, do some different colors just for fun and games and of course they're not that expensive energy saving 38 leds lamps diy kit electronic suite one set d uh okay i uh, got these from diy box I did, in fact, pay $1.96 each for them, for the, and then I bought three of them. I did not pay shipping because it was free shipping way back when I bought these. Please note, beads not included. Beads are what they call LEDs for some unknown reason. Um, anyway, it takes 38 LEDs, uh, not included. Uh, the overall circuit is uh, draws 2.4 watts, runs anywhere from 85 to 277 volts AC, and luminous flux depends completely on what type of LEDs you put on it. Theoretically, the uh, plastic shell is flame retardant. I should maybe try that uh, experiment and just see how flame retardant it is. Now, somebody who isn't a cheapskate would just replace the blade with a fresh one, but I'm too cheap for that. C 
see what's next in here. This says... It doesn't say. It's from Kyrgyzstan, though. Oh, yeah. There we go. I like a new one. This is three different LED rings. Two different types um, and two of the smaller one. That one is 12 LEDs in the ring, and that one is 16. These are WS2812 LEDs, aka NeoPixels. I bought these two to replace stock because I used the one that I had when I made my OctoPrint monitoring device. And as I was shopping, I decided to buy a slightly larger one as well, just to add to the collection. Because I think I have a few different sizes of these. Yeah, a few. Which one is this? This one is 12 as well. Oh. Okay, that's 12 but in a different size. All right. And what is that one? That looks like about 8, I think. Yeah. Okay, so now I have an assortment of sizes. Uh, that's why I buy a lot of this stuff. Not necessarily because I have an immediate project goal for it. It's just nice to have what you need in stock when... Uh, when inspiration strikes and you feel like making something, then you've got the parts that you need right handy. Blackboard 16-bit WS2812 5050 RGB LED ring plus integrated drivers for Arduino. I got this and the other ones from World Chips. Um, I did pay $2.97, but the shipping was a whole bunch less at the time. And the other one, 12-bit RGB LED ring WS2812 5050 RGB LED integrated driver module for Arduino, also for from World Chips, uh, two thirty nine each. Looks like there's still a few sellers that have it uh, for more reasonable shipping fees. Some of these are just outrageous, like more shipping than the thing costs. That's nuts. Anyway, I think we're fairly familiar with these. Uh, you've seen enough uh, of these WS2812 LEDs come through my mailbag. Um, there's a control chip built into each 5050 IC package that uh, drives the RGB LEDs independently um, with one control signal line coming from an Arduino or a dedicated uh, controller. Next thing in, doesn't say what it is because this was uh, delivered from the dropshipping warehouse in Mississauga. So, what? Oscilloscope probes. Two of them. Two matching ones, more importantly. I do already have two probes for my scope, but they are completely unmatched and different. So I figured I would treat myself to a matching pair of scope probes. Now, I have no illusions that these are the highest quality probes in the world, um, but they do claim to uh, be capable of handling 600 volts and of being accurate up to 6 megahertz or 200 megahertz in 10 to 1 mode. We shall see about that, I guess, but they are switchable 1 times and 10 times. Um, the ground clip is removable. It's reasonable enough I guess there is a little tweaker for adjusting the flatness uh, where is that down in there there is an adjustment capacitor all nicely shielded to compensate for the uh, for the probe and what else do we have here so like every probe they come with this little springy hook piece which pops off there's a couple of little and a condom so that you don't you can still probe stuff without shorting out there is the little spring ground thing which goes onto that ground and provides you with a little ground touch point right beside there those come with just about every probe i don't think i've ever seen anybody use them um there's some little colored bits that you can put on there and there when you've got multiple probes so you can tell at a glance uh, which one's the yellow and which one's the blue one, which channel they're on. On a more advanced scope than I've got, you can actually color your traces to match that as well if you choose to. And this looks like... Ah, yes. That slips over there. And then you can go on to... I think that fits a B and C. Yes, it does. You can just slip over a B and C. Or, I guess, a T and C connector as well. So you can measure things like that. Very standard assortment of accessories with it. 
Two pieces, 200 megahertz oscilloscope probe test lead kit accessory for Tektronics Rigol Fluke. Or, you know, any type of scope, really. Uh, I got these from Gopchin Elect, something like that. I, I can't pronounce these names. I can barely pronounce English properly. I got the two of them as a package for $21.81, so uh, $10.75 or thereabouts per, which is a smoking deal if they're any good at all, and free shipping. Woohoo! So again, it's calling them 200 megahertz probes. The two probes that I've got right now both call themselves 100 megahertz. So even if these aren't good up to 200 megahertz, they're still probably as good as what I've got. And more importantly, they're both the same. Just for reference, my scope isn't anything especially fancy. It's a uh, old used 300 megahertz analog tectronics oscilloscope an awesome scope in its day but compared to those fancy digital ones these days it's a little bit dated but these uh these cheap probes are probably going to do just nicely and they are sort of the big brother of one of the two probes I already got which is this one that's on channel two which is 100 meg and this one is a tectronics branded one that came with the scope but I have no providence, and it's you know, decades old too. The, uh, the the cable's been repaired, yada yada. So it's it may still outperform the ones that I just got, but again, they're matching. So when I've got when I'm sampling two different uh, signals and the same circuit, I can compare them apples to apples. And the last thing in is another one that uh, doesn't have any description on it at all. Because it was reshipped from Mississauga. Oh, one piece is optical power meter. This is a piece of fiber optic test equipment. Admittedly, a really cheap, shitty one from China, but a piece of test equipment nonetheless. So it comes with two different connectors for different types of fiber. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, fiber ends that are standard. Um, that is not one that we typically use at work. However, the other one is. This one is an SC connector, which we do have a bunch of at work. Well, that's nice. Um, power, auto off, uh, zeroing, backlight, and a decibel. Okay. Peel that guy off. No, you don't get a slow sexy peel. I don't do that. A little kickstand on there. It claims uh, minus 70 to plus 10 dB range, uh, plus or minus 0.2. Uh, it claims to work between 850 and 1625 nanometers. And I can't tell anything else about it. it takes two AA batteries. There it is. Okay, so it comes up in low battery already. Um, it is showing no signal and low signal, which is correct because I've got the cap on and there's no, I don't have a fiber source. Right now it came up set to 1310 nanometers. I'll set it for 1490, 1550, 1625, 850, 980, 1300, 1310. All the standard ones that you would expect to find in a meter like this. There's the backlight. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Um, and, okay, I can have it in either nanowatts or dB. Okay. Um, for zeroing, you can use that to, uh, to get a, uh, a delta. Basically, you hook your light source up to it, calibrate the light source up to it, zero it, and then put a link of fiber in there to see how much loss is in it. Um, that's handy. And auto off. Or just powered off, I guess. What does this manual have to say for itself? Nothing I can read. It's all in Chinese. It has the same uh, stats on it as was on the back of the thing. So that doesn't tell me anything. Let's go check the listing. Fiber optical power meter cable tester networks FCSC connector minus 70 to plus 10 dBm. I got this at auction for $6.74 with free shipping. Uh, got it from this guy, Alex underscore XU10. Um, I'll put the link to this listing, even though it's a one auction. Um, 
if the uh, listing's fully expired, you can at least uh, use the search terms. Not a lot of information down here. What you see is what you get. <laughs> okay then. But I didn't actually expect that I would get it for a $6.75 bid. I really didn't. I mostly just bid on it on a lark. So the ones that we actually use at work, this one in particular, uh, are a whole hell of a lot more expensive, even used. So I figured for what, less than 10 bucks, it was worth a gamble. I'm not actually going to use it at work. I just want to compare it uh, and uh, and play with it and see what it's like and tear into it and see what's under the hood because I'm obviously not going to take apart any of the tool, the calibrated tools I actually use at work. That would be one of those career limiting moves. Well, that was a fun one and only one real bust in the whole thing, but oh well, it cost me less than a buck. Let's just quickly check on the transit times. The scope probes took 34 days. This uh, tubing took 72 days. The LED rings took 34 days. The power meter took 14 days because it was reshipped from the Canadian warehouse. And the three light bulb kits took 45 days to, to get here. So, I don't know, it, it seems that uh, transit times are starting to calm down a little bit. I've got one outlier for 72 days, but you know, a month to a month and a half seems to be about what China normally is. So yeah, uh, fun assortment to play with. Looking forward to seeing what I can uh, what I can do with some of these and giving this thing a test. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As always, thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me fund this silliness and buying me a beer or two now and again. I appreciate that. Um, questions and comments down below in the comment section. I'll talk to you later.